Aloha everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Doug and this is Leaving the Dream. On January 4th, 2022, the very same day that Sam Kapoi would turn himself into federal authorities to begin his 18 year long federal prison sentence, I released an interview with Sam where we discussed his involvement in the conspiracy to distribute crystal methamphetamine that landed him in prison. During that interview, he said he didn't want to discuss his wife Tyrell Silva or her involvement because she had pled guilty to the same conspiracy and was still awaiting sentencing. So a few days after he went to prison and I released the interview, Tyrell reached out to me and said that she was now ready to share her side of the story. So we sat down for two hours in an interview where we discussed her involvement and her role. If you haven't caught up on the Sam Kapoi videos, you can go ahead and click this link right here and watch those so that you know what we're talking about. And if you wanna skip ahead through all the intros and all the music, you can go ahead and click on the timestamp in the description. I just wanna say thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all the support. You guys are the best. Enjoy the interview. Satisfaction without the fight. A man has limits, or oh, so they say. But I never listen. Did it my way. I'm gonna take what's a mine. I paid my dues. I dare you to walk a mile in these shoes. The beat in my soul just keeps getting louder. Give me some of that. Tyrell Silva. Hi, Doug. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you good. Thanks for doing this. Of course. Tyrell, did I ask you to do this interview? No, you did not. Have I paid you to do this interview? No, you have not. Have I promised you anything to do this video? No, you did not. So you're doing this interview because you want to and free of charge? Yes. I know this isn't easy. I know that your life is not easy right now. It's a scary time and your future is uncertain. Um, so I just wanna say thank you. I appreciate you coming to me to do this. I know a lot of people are wondering, I get hit up every day about you and what's gonna happen. And what does the plea deal mean? What's the truth? What's her story? You have a different perspective than Sam, because you got to see what happened with the last one that I did with Sam. And uh, Sam didn't have that. He just came in blind. It's a little bit different for you. And it's a little more loaded because you know a little bit about what to expect. So that doesn't make it easier. And uh, I understand you could be nervous and all that good stuff. I'm nervous because I don't know you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. This is not what I thought I would be doing. Okay. Tyrell, um, how did you first hear about the podcast? Like, how did you, how did you come to know that I even existed? So I watched you for a while. Um, I knew you were covering a lot of the local stories that was happening in Hawaii. I just liked your take on it and how you was just being informative for the people. You know, there were times where I was watching you and Sam didn't even know who he was, but I was like, watch the sky. Like I put it on the TV. I'm like, you need to watch him. Um, I, I was engaged into the Ariel Sellers case because I have children of my own and nieces of her age. And so that's that was the initial um, connection and engagement for me into reading up on the story and out finding your platform. So that's how I, um, I found you. I started watching all of your stories after that. Ariel Sellers was after I did Sam's video, I believe. Yeah. And so that's the funniest thing. Even I would be on your um, YouTube page and I, I would not, I've, I did not cross that, that video. It just did not come by me. And it was so random. Like one night, one of my childhood friends, like she's like a sister to me. Um, she actually texted me and was like, Hey, did you see the video of the guy made of Sam? And I was like, no, like what video? And she's like, you know, the white guy that does all the interviews on YouTube, like he made a video of Sam. And I was like, what? Like, and I said, I was like, Doug. And she was like, yeah, like that's him. And I'm like, like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm always on his stuff. And she's like, 
yeah, like she, she sent me the link. And so me and Sam were driving home and um, like I put it on while we were driving home in the car. So be honest, like what, when you put it on, what were you thinking? Were you nervous? Were you guys like? No, I wasn't. Okay. Um, that's the crazy thing. Like I wasn't nervous and I wasn't upset. I was just um, anxious to hear what was said in the video. Right. So I was at that point just um, waiting to hear what you were going to bring up and what you were going to say. Yeah. So we listened to like maybe a little more than half of the video. And then we got home and we rushed into the bedroom and we um, connected it to the TV. And so we watched the remainder of the video on the TV. And so at that point, you know, Sam was already trying to reach out to you. And I actually told him, I'm like, why are you going to do that? Like, just let it die down. You know what I mean? Like it's all over the news. It's all over the social medias. And, and now he's making a video about it. Like, don't you want to just let it die down? And then he's like, no, because, you know, I want to, so I want to talk to him. I want to see what he has to say. So I just was like, whatever, you know, like, cause he truly does whatever he wants to anyway. So I just kind of like went with it, like, let him, let him contact you. Did he tell you I'm going to reach out to him? I knew immediately once the video was done, he went on his phone and I knew what he was doing. Like I know him so well. And I, I actually said, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm contacting this guy. I'm like, why are you doing that? You know, like I, like I know him so well. I know exactly what he was up to. Man. Did he discuss with you plans for us to do not. an interview? No. Um, I just knew that, it was going to happen like one day and then he didn't have time to do it. And then I actually told him, I'm like, you know what? Um, there's, you only have a couple of days left. Like you, you need to designate some time to get it done or else you're never going to be able to get it done. And you, you won't be able to share your side of the story. So um, that particular day I dropped him off to a friend's house. So he has, he has friends like in production. So he did like this video where he sent people like a video of him you know, um, requesting for character letters. So he went to that same friend. And oh, so I told him, I'm like, you know, you didn't say like a thank you video. You didn't create a thank, uh, like a sorry video and like a thank you video, which you need to do something of that sort because you created this video to ask for letters and you, you didn't give an apology. You just said, hey, I need your support. Write these letters for me. So I, I actually told him like, you need to create a video, like first of all, apologizing for what happened. And secondly, thanking them for coming to your aid and supporting you and sending you those videos. So he did. Um, he actually did videos that I didn't even know about till after he went away um, because they put the files in a Dropbox and then he sent me the Dropbox. And then um, when I was looking through the Dropbox, all of these separate files of videos, then I, like, I found a video for me, which I didn't even know he did. And um, like he did a video for his sons and like for his family and all that stuff. And even in your video, like you had a bonus clip that I didn't even watch. I watched that like weeks after, I would say like two and a half weeks after. Wow. And um, that was a really emotional, um, that was a really emotional time because I didn't know that he created that video um, where he just like says sorry to me and whatever. Um, I didn't know it, it existed. I didn't know both videos existed till after the fact. I'm glad he did them. Yeah. I remember during the video with Sam, you called him. Yes. Did you know he was doing that interview with me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you want him to do the interview? I mean, after he explained to you what he was going to do. Um, I did support him afterwards because I just wanted him to like, let it die down. So I wasn't, um, I wasn't for it in the beginning. And I just wanted him to have like time of peace at that moment. But I also wanted him to share his side of the story, which I knew a lot of people wouldn't understand. Yeah. And because at the end of the day, he's not a bad person. And he's did more good than bad. And he just made 
some bad decisions. And I think a lot of us can relate to stuff like that because nobody's perfect. And I'm sure we all have times where we fall short. Um, maybe not to that catastrophic degree, but definitely to some degree. But I did want him to share um, his side of the story. And I felt like he deserved that. When you watched the videos, is there anything that you regret him talking about or wish he wouldn't have talked about? Um, no, not necessarily. Um, what I did wish that he alliterated more on was his actual role in supporting his grandmother. I guess my next question was, did he miss anything in the interviews? I guess that would have been the answer. Um, yeah. Did he get anything wrong? I do a lot of podcasts. And I get stuff wrong all the time because I talk so much and it's so easy, especially when someone else is leading the conversation. And I led that interview. Um, you know, he didn't know where I was going to go with things. So there were questions, you know, he didn't know any question I was going to ask. This was, it was a last minute thing. He didn't have much time. People can get things wrong. I do it all the time. And I don't mean to. So I'm not necessarily asking if he was lying. I'm just saying, is there anything that he got wrong? He can't clarify because he's, yeah. he's away. But like, is there anything he got wrong? I mean, we're going to get into the details, but I'm just asking yeah. specifically uh, about. Nothing that stood out to me in particular. No. Does he know about this interview that we're doing? He does. Yeah. I, I emailed him initially. Um, after we discuss um, the first time about making this video, um, he was like, yeah, you know, hon, like you should, you, you should definitely tell your side of the story. Like it's important that you also um, come forward and share your side. Cause he, you know, he feels like I have more of the shit end of the deal. So it's, um, he always supported the this video for uh for me and you like he was just very much wanting to wanting me to get my story out there you know so why do you want to do this video well initially what urged me or compelled me to do this is one when you were coordinating with sam on his video and you wanted to like share my information in the credits. I didn't want that because I didn't want to be in the public eye and be in the media. And um, I didn't want the attention. And then secondly, also to give me a piece of, a sense of peace and clarity so I can navigate my way through this ordeal as well. So I just wanted to be in the outskirts as much as possible that was my focus you know I was like I didn't want to do it to save my kids embarrassment and then I did want to do it because I wanted to tell my story so it's more like a timing thing yeah. you wanted to do it but it was too early Sam was going away yeah well we're getting closer now mm -hmm. to the sentencing which is going to be Valentine's Day Monday so in three days correct mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So tell me about you. Tell me about your heritage. Like, where were you born? Where did you go to school? Um, that kind of stuff. 